Ian from New York. Ian, what's going on, man? CP, what's up, man? First time caller, long time viewer. Uh, <laughs> pleasure to be on with you tonight. I just wanted to come talk Knicks. <laughs> uh, I knew where to go. I knew to come to the to the best platform on YouTube. Thank you for having me. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, th- this guy sounds awfully familiar. This sounds like Ian Begley from SNY, man. What's going on? <laughs> CP, what's up, man? How are you doing? Yeah, do- doing all right, man. Had to navigate some technical difficulties. It it happens, you know what I mean. But uh, but we here live. Knicks win to close out the preseason on a high note. Um, give give me your thoughts on on the overall play for these in these four games, man. What do you think about how they played? Well, just coming out of this last one, uh, Tom Thibodeau has a decision to make, right? Do you go Emmanuel quickly off the bat as your starting point guard? Do you go with the veteran Alfred Payton? Uh, it's just it's going to be interesting to see how they approach this decision uh, over the next few days as they get to the opener. Um, and then, you know, you look down the line, I think Alec Burks, before he uh, left the team for personal reasons, uh, you know, he seemed like, he complimented the lineups he was in well. Uh, you, I saw, I mean, listen, this guy gets crushed by Nick fans, and I get it. But uh, Julius Randle, at least to me, in spurts, looked like he was giving the ball up more willingly. You know, they weren't having him uh, dribble the ball up. They weren't having him handle it at the top a lot. And I think they put him in some spots to succeed. So that's, that's one takeaway. Uh, that I had noticed at least. R.J. Barrett, I think you have to like his efficiency. Um, but all in all, listen, I, don't, I think this is going to be a, a tough season for them. Yeah. I think a, a, a perfect scenario for them, best case scenario for them, is having young guys like Emmanuel quickly learn on the job, um, get better over the course of the year, and then you start to build on that young core. Uh, but it's going to be interesting to see how things play out, CP. I mean, if you're Tom Thibodeau, are you starting quickly night one? You going out for Payton? You going with another look? What are you doing at the point guard position? Um, we have nothing to lose, man. You and I have been talking about this point guard position all off season. I told you I don't think much of what we have. And quickly has shown that he can get the job done. Yes, he's going to learn on the job. Hasn't been perfect. But he's shown that a little bit of competence at the point guard position can go a long way for this team getting into the paint, being a factor, you know, someone that the team has to respect, that the team has to close out hard on because you have to respect his three-point shot. You know, I saw in the last game the way that he he attacked the closeouts, you know, able to keep the defense on on the move, you know, finding guys open wide open for three. He's got Kevin Knox rejuvenated, man. You know, (laughs) quickly (laughs) has got to get the look. And and you mentioned Alec Burks. I want to see the lineup with quickly Burks, RJ, you know Randall is going to be a mainstay, so we'll continue with him. And whether it's Mitch or Noel, I'm okay with either one right now because I think, you know, during this preseason, they've gotten around the same amount of minutes, same amount of effect. I'm, I'm good with either one. But I'd like to see that three-guard lineup between Burks, Quickly, and RJ and, and see where they go from there. Yeah, that, you know, that to me seems like an intriguing lineup, and I think that the interesting thing with Thibodeau, like everybody talks about his history of, you know, leaning on veterans and not really playing young guys. He's not going to have a chance, first of all, to lean on veterans with this Nick team because there's not many of them. But also I think that kind of ignores some of the work he did in Chicago with younger players like Derek Rhodes, Joakim Noah, Taj Gibson. Like he has a, a, a decent track record of, player development and, and letting those guys get minutes. Yeah. Uh, but it's just going to be interesting to see how he deals with, you know, a team that's not veteran laden and how he deals with like the, the losing that we expect to come with this year. Does he, does he give guys a longer rope? Does he allow these rookies to play through some mistakes or does he have a tight leash with them? That's, that's something I'm interested yeah. to see as we get started uh, with the regular season on Wednesday. Yeah, I- indeed. And and even Zach Levine, you know, got some burn early with Tibbs um, in Minnesota as well. Yes. I just think it's it's important, you know, number nine, Ian, and, and this is my next point, number nine, R.J. Barrett is on a tear in this preseason. It's hard to glean much off of preseason, right? But one thing is for sure is that R.J. has been efficient 
Seven to sixteen in the first game, one or two from the line. Ten and seventeen second game, four or five from the line. Six to twelve third game, three or three from the line. Five and ten in tonight, and five or five from the line. I mean, RJ's playing so well. I don't want to see more of Peyton and Randall getting him off to slow starts. I'd rather them start it off the right way, get him in a, in a nicely spaced lineup, get him as, a, as another playmaker along with quickly. Burks can give you some playmaking. All three of them have shown that they can get to the line. Burks, you know, is a good free throw shooter. You know quickly is a good free throw shooter. And RJ is starting to come along. I mean, these numbers are solid from the free throw line, man. So I think RJ, it, it's very important to factor him in when, when Tibbs considers his starting lineup going into opening night. Yeah, there's no doubt. You want, you mentioned, CP, you want players that compliment him well. Uh, one interesting thing on the shot, and I spoke to a guy who RJ works with a lot, one of his trainers, Drew Hanlon. Mm -hmm. He said that before um, RJ, actually early on when RJ got started with the Knicks last year, they had him change his shot in a way that caused RJ to kind of be, you know, not super comfortable and then not confident. And he said that they, got, he and RJ, they're working together this off season and they push his elbow out a little further. And they, he feels like Drew Hanlon feels like RJ is more comfortable. And you're kind of seeing that, you know, with the, the, the way he looks with his shot, obviously, you know, he's not a knockdown shooter from the right. perimeter by any stretch but he just looks a little more comfortable with his shot. And I think, you know, I think some of the coaches feel that Barrett, you put the ball in his hands at the top or even on the wing and allow him to make plays. I think you saw more of that this preseason too. So uh, that's another thing to keep an eye on here uh, as we move forward. Well, listen, I think everybody kind of gets caught up with RJ Barrett being the number three overall pick and the idea that he's got to be this incredible player. If he turns out to be like a solid number two, number three on a good team, that's a valuable, valuable yeah. player in this league. So it just I guess it depends on what your personal ceiling is for Barrett. But I think, you know, realistic expectations are important when it comes to younger players. And I think he'll, based on his work ethic and how he approaches the game, I think he'll fulfill his talent, whatever it happens to be. Yeah, I, I agree, and, and salute to everybody in the chat. Hit that thumbs up button for you boys. Yes, we are talking to Ian Begley. The mystery caller has been revealed. SOI's Ian Begley is on the line. Hit that thumbs up button for you boys. Yeah, I agree with you, Ian. I, I think, you know, number two, number three option is realistic. I don't expect him to ever become a, a knockdown shooter, but I feel like he he's playing a lot smarter where, you know, if some of the shots aren't falling, he, he's going back to his bread and butter, getting to the line. And now he's hitting, the, he's hitting those free throws. And if he can do that, you know, 18 points per game is not out of, you know, is not out of reach for him. And I think that's, that's good overall for the team. Um, what's been your take on, on Obi, the Obi randall dynamic, and how, how do you th see them kind of working this out this season? Yeah, you know, I think I, just a prediction, right? I'm not, this is not based on anything solid that I'm reporting, but I have to think that the Knicks would continue to kind of look at opportunities with uh, that involved Julius Randle being traded, mm -hmm. and I don't think, I mean, I, I don't think they're in a rush to do anything, but I would think they'll continue to listen, and if the opportunity presents itself to make a move and it makes sense for them, they would do it, and that would open things up for Obi Toppin. You know, obviously we all saw that first that first game, he looked very comfortable, um, particularly on offense. And then, you know, more recently, it hasn't come as easily for him. But I think, you know, defensively, a lot of people were talking about him being kind of unplayable or like a disaster on that end. Hasn't been bad. I, you know, I haven't seen that so far. Uh, you know, I, I, he communicates. It seems like he plays well within the frame of a team defense. Uh, obviously, he's going to be making mistakes throughout the course of the year. That's what happens with rookies. But I haven't seen him, you know, look like a, a total liability on that end of the floor. So I think you take that as a positive uh, if you're rooting for this team. And, you know, the, the offense is going to be there and it's going to come. Yeah, I, I agree with you. The defense hasn't been terrible. 
Uh, the offense, especially in the first game, was there. I like the playmaking. I think the playmaking has, has been on this play. And I, I just think, you know, I was on the Strickland with Schwinney and those guys last night. I think it's going to be a struggle for, for him to kind of find his way. He'll have some ups and downs, but I think it's going to be tough for him to kind of navigate the whole Randall situation. It's going to be tough for Tibbs to figure out uh, the playing time, how to play them together, whether he does or he doesn't. But, um, again, I, I think that, that certainly bears watching. Um, another question, you know, they still have $18 million in cap space left. How aggressive do you think they'll, they'll be in, in trying to um, reach that salary cap floor? I think it's about $8 million that they have to get there. Uh, do, you, do you think they'll be aggressive there, or would they you know, not mind taking the hit and just allocating that revenue across the roster? You know, towards the end of free agency, teams in touch with them definitely were under the impression that they were open to taking on a contract or two or three, whatever, into that cap space to get assets, like you saw with the Ed Davis transactions. So, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, whether it's as a third team in a trade or you, when you get closer to the deadline and a team determines that they want to shed some salary, maybe for free agency that summer, or they want to get, uh, you know, below the hard tax, they want to get off some money, that's where the Knicks could be in play. You know, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they took that route to get up to that salary floor. I'm not sure, how, like, how much getting to that floor to get into that number matters to them. Right. right. But I, I think that if there's an opportunity to, you know, be a dumping ground, be a cat, like a, a dumping ground for another team that wants to get off of a player and you can get another pick out of it, I think those are the opportunities they would pursue uh, with that cap space in season. Indeed, indeed. So to everybody in the chat, once again, hit that thumbs up button for you boys. CP from Knicks Fan TV checking in. Ian Begley of SNY, the surprise guest caller, is on dishing on the Knicks. Knicks win 119-83 in the preseason finale. Kick it off in Indiana, December 22nd. And we'll see who the starting point guard is going to be. Um, Ian, last, last question on that. You know, I wasn't expecting quickly to to get this shot so early uh but with rivers going out with frank once again going out he, he's he's gotten more of an opportunity here to show himself and he has so now i think it, it's interesting to see with with rivers coming back how do you see this rotation playing out at least to start the season off yeah that's another tough decision for tom thibodeau and his staff if, if we were talking cp uh, let's say we were talking last month, I would have said, based on what I was hearing, it was pretty likely that Rivers would have taken Frank Nellikina's rotation spot. Um, that was just based on stuff that I was hearing a few weeks ago. Things could have changed between then and now. Uh, coaches could have changed their opinions on players between then and now. But, you know, it, it, somebody is going to get bumped. And I think that they, you know, at least coming into the – preseason they were pretty committed to giving Dennis Smith right. Jr. a rotation role or the opportunity to earn a rotation role earn regular minutes and if that's the case I still think Nelly Keenan would be the odd man out um but I I don't know that you know I, I don't know I'm not that saying it that confidently because I don't know where their opinions are on it at the moment uh but that there's gonna somebody's gonna be out of the rotation there once Rivers comes back, because he's obviously going to play. And I don't think we accounted for, at least people who are, you know, trying to formulate guesses on the rotation. I certainly don't think we accounted for quickly potentially being the starting point guard. So that, that you know, then you have Alfred Payton and you have to find minutes for him. So it changes the dynamic in the backcourt too. And you could see a guy like Nilakino or Dennis Smith Jr. being on the outside looking in and that rotation early on this year. But I think that, you know, I think that even practices between now and Wednesday will kind of be taken into account as the coaches kind of analyze which ways they want to go. Um, so we don't know if Rivers is going to be ready for the opener, but when he does get healthy and is all the way back, uh, somebody's going to get knocked out. If I was betting on it a couple of weeks ago, it would have been Neil Aquina. I'm not so sure right now, though. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure either. And then, you know, Bullock had a, had a 
you know, overall lousy preseason, but tonight he, he bounced back. You know, if you want to take the, the competition into consideration, I guess you can. But I think, you know, if his shooting is on par, he can certainly make, make a name for himself, especially at the three. So I think either way, I think Frank and DSJ are, are still going to be on the fringe. It's it. I think that Knox has, you know, warranted additional playing time. So hopefully, you know, they, they give him some, some longer looks going into it. But I think, again, I think my, my lineup would be, Started off, give me quickly Burks, RJ. You know they're gonna go Randall, and and if they want to go Noel, fine. Off the bench, I'll go Rivers. I'll go uh, Frank, Kev, Obi, and, and then Mitch. I think that that's my ten right there. Man. That's solid. That's solid. Uh, the question I have for UCP: two questions. Mm-hmm. Do you want to see Mitchell Robinson start to let it go from behind the arc or at least shoot jump shots uh, like early on this season? And the other one is not really a question. It's more of a statement. Mm -hmm. Uh, I I knew I couldn't match the level of Jay Boogie as a caller to the show (laughs) because that guy was unbelievable. (laughs) But, uh, But I hope that we were able to have some fun here talking Knicks for a few minutes, and I certainly had a good time coming on. I appreciate you having me on. appreciate you taking the call. Appreciate it, Ian. Appreciate it. Ian Begley, SNY. Make sure you guys hit that thumbs up button for your boys with the impromptu appearance. Hey, I don't think anybody can match Jay Boogie's energy, man, because like I said, he needs to be a, he needs to be a coach himself or motivational speaker. I might hire him. But um, I think with Mitch, you know, I, I said this on, on the podcast with, um, with the Strickland guys yesterday. You know, we, we saw... Um, we saw all the, all the workout videos with Mitch and, you know, people, you know, were encouraged by it and, you know, yeah, you want to see him going out there and shooting it. You know, every, everybody thinks he, he wants, they, they want to see him look like Anthony Davis out there. I'm just not sure he's going to take that large of a leap offensively. I'm just not sure he's going to do that. What I want him to see, what I want to see him do is more so master some of the fundamentals, keeping the offense moving, being able to pass the ball on dribble handoffs, put the ball on the floor a little bit to get the defense to react, you know, to respect what he's going to do out there. Um, can he work on a go-to move? You know, it may not be a three-pointer. Maybe it's just a little, you know, a little mid-range, a little pull-up mid-range if, he, if he's wide open. You know, start, o- start off there. Start there with the basics, and then we can see if we can, you know, turn him into something something more than that. But I think in the beginning, it's just, number one, just just be able to stay on the floor. You know, Wednesday night, Andre Drummond was was uh, was dogging him. Tonight, no Drummond, JaVale McGee. But, you know, Mitch showed up, and, and I thought he, he played very well. He imposed his will early, and that's what you wanted to see from the Block Nest Monster. Number two, stay durable. You know, guys that are built like him, they, you know, they get these tick, tick, ticky-tack injuries. Uh, with the with the legs, the ankles, and stuff like that. So staying durable, keeping his head in the game mentally. Sometimes he he makes a mistake, or somebody gets in his head, and he picks up a stupid foul, might jump on top of a guy's back, or trip him. Little things like that. I want to see him shore up. And then as as it comes along offensively, just just working on just being a factor in the offense. Um, and, and then we'll see if the shot comes around. We'll, we'll see if the shot comes around, but. Uh, nice, nice bounce back from Mitch against the Cavaliers tonight. But Ian Begley, ladies and gentlemen, just joining us. Definitely appreciate Ian Begley for coming in.